Hello, 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 and welcome, my Piscean Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs. Welcome to your soulmate read for April, May 2020. I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons, professional witch, professional intuitive president of Drawing the Circle Productions and Pisces Moon. Ah, you're the last reading in the series, as usual, but I always do try and save the best for last, if you know the song. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please do like the video you are watching, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell because I am putting out content every single day, if not a recorded reading, that I've been doing these um, uh, live chats in uh, the morning and in the evening, usually 11 a.m., 11 p.m. to help the community. And my circle of friends get together, uh, we pray, we meditate, and sometimes we just laugh ourselves crazy, which is needed as well, right? Uh, so uh, I hope you will follow along. Uh, let's get down to business, though. This is a general read, so please take what resonates, leave what doesn't, and check your other signs. That's why I always do Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs for the relationship-based readings, of which I do a lot of them. Uh, so please uh, keep that in mind as we go, because we are looking at a soulmate contract reading. A soulmate is a type of soul contract. You have more than just one in a lifetime. They're not just romantic, sexual. My mom and I are soulmate uh, contracted. Uh, there are agreements that you make prior to coming into each lifetime, sometimes with the same souls over and over and over again. Different than a twin flame, the foundation of a soulmate contract is that you help each other heal. Okay, different than a twin flame, but we'll talk about that when I do the twin flames for next month. Cool, cool. If not, watch the ones from this month. It's all in my, uh, it's all on my channel. Go have a look see dooksy There are playlists for all of the different types of readings that I do. We are looking at this as a contract, though. I was raised by a lawyer. So uh, we're going to have party number one over here and party number two over there, just like a contract, except we're going to be calling it Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine has nothing to do with uh, biological gender, it has to do with energe energetic dynamic, which is getting harder to say as this day goes on. Um, like, I consider myself a Divine Feminine and I'm a guy. So there you go. Uh, so if you will focus on your breath as we go, and I will focus on my breath as I go, I will be able to get you the clarity of guidance and grace that I've been trained to do my entire life, and you will be able to really be in the present moment and <clears throat> feel what's going on in your Piscean intuitive field, what resonates, what doesn't, because it is a general read. Cool? <coughs> Excuse me. I just have a little coffee stuck in my throat, so let's give it a little more. Oh, this is Wonder Mug. Say hello, Wonder Mug. Hello, Wonder Mug. Mm. Yes, I am a Princess Diana appreciator <laughs> from Themyscira just to clarify. Um, so let's get into this gig. Uh, all of the decks that I read are in the description box at the bottom. There's a lot of cool stuff in the description box this time around, especially two different videos explaining the difference between Twin Flame and Soulmate, one by me and one by the spiritual teacher and Hay House author Matt Kahn. We will be using his healing mantra deck as the last card down in this reading. So go check it out. We're going to start, though, with the Caroline Mace Archetype deck, my favorite female spiritual teacher of Matt Kahn's my new favorite male. Uh, so, uh, so let's do this, shall we? Uh, we're going to get one for the Divine Feminine, one for the Divine Masculine. If you're new to this, you'll see how I work, and if you've been following me for a while, buckle your seatbelts. I'm a Pisces moon. Let's do this. My collective pantheons of angels, goddesses, gods, masters, and the higher selves of all involved, mine own included, please. I need two cards. One for the Divine Feminine and one for the Divine Masculine in this Piscean Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, romantic, sexual soulmate contract. That's the kind of contract reads I'm doing. I forgot to say it earlier. These are the ones we've been working on for lifetimes to get them right. 
So please, one for the Divine Feminine, please, my collective pantheons. Excellent. That flew out of my hand, into my hand and out of it. And please, one for the Divine Masculine. Now, keep in mind, even though I'm a Pisces moon and I identify as a Divine Feminine, it doesn't mean that I could not show up in the Divine Masculine position because we're all fluid that way. Because um, if I didn't have <laughs> at least a balance of Divine Masculine energy, I wouldn't be able to actually communicate and do this stuff on YouTube, of all things. You with me? So these cards can be a little triggery. Archetypes have both shadow and light in them, lead and gold, toxic and healthy. But like I said, these contracts help you help each other heal. So the lead, the shadow, the toxic is good to know what you're healing within yourself because you're simultaneous healing, simultaneously healing that within your soulmate. Um, partner here. Keep in mind it doesn't matter if you are together or apart, whether you know each other or not, the quantum entanglement and the unified field uh, of the quantum really does uh, ensure that you're helping each other heal. So the faster you heal, the faster they heal, and sometimes the faster you come together. Cool? Let's have a look and see who we got here. Didn't I just say that it's possible that I could show up in the Divine, the divine Masculine? We'll get there in a minute. Because for the Divine Feminine, it's interesting, we have a masculine family archetype of the Knight, K-N-I-G-H-D, you know, the Knight. And for the Divine Masculine, we've got the Witch, and I am... I'm a Piscean Witch. So there there we go, Pisces Moon Witch. So this one probably has me in it. Now, I'm going to read you what's going on here in these cards. So we're looking at a, um, a Divine Feminine Knight, even though it is a masculine family archetype, just to prove the point. This is not about biological gender. This could be a woman, this could be a male. But even if it is a woman, she has the Knight archetype somewhere in this contract. The shadow attribute, allegiance to a destructive ruler or principle, romantic delusions, and who isn't raised with romantic delusions, right? Particularly the one that, oh, once I find my soulmate, I will never suffer again. Ha! Soulmate contracts are no guarantee that you're going to be happy for the rest of your life because happiness is an inside job, all right? You have to kind of do that work yourself. No one can make you happy, right? So right there, there's a really good example of how someone could quest because knights go on quests and once they get what they think they're finding, it ends up not being what they want because what they want is delusional, not their fault, but something that we must mature out of. The light attribute. Loyalty, romance, and chivalry, a love of honor. So I can certainly see that within a woman, right, as well as a man. And I would say in a soulmate contract, that's somebody that I would want. I want somebody who's honorable. I want somebody um, who is loyal. Not in the toxic way, but loyal to their own honor code. Loyal to me and, and, you know, to be truthful and honest with me. I've been lied to a lot. So, you know, and it's the worst thing you can possibly do is lie to an intuitive or an empath because we feel something's off. And if you lie to us, we end up doubting ourselves. It's horrible. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> Never, ever, ever again. So here we have got the Divine Masculine Witch Archetype. Now, if you'll notice, there's no picture. There's very few words written on this card because this is a blank card that Caroline gave us in this deck. Not that she gave it to me personally. It's just in the package of, of the deck where you can write your own archetypes because there are, I mean, this is a thick deck, but there are thousands of more archetypes that exist that could, that, you know, the deck would be this big. It would be very hard to shuffle. Uh, so... You know, I was like, so where's the witch archetype? So I think we know the witch archetype, at least in the shadow. I mean, even in the light, right? We've got, I mean, I hate to say the wicked witch of the West is the shadow and the good witch of the North is the light because it's more complex than that. Read the book Wicked. If you haven't seen the musical, when you get a chance, see the musical. Um, because Alphaba wasn't so wicked and Glinda wasn't that good, right? So what do we know about the witch archetype? in general. It is about wisdom. That is the root of the word witch. Now, I've been teaching about witchcraft for decades. So if you take the root of the word of witch, it's wit. So what's somebody who has wit? Someone who's fast, right? So there's a, a wise, smart, usually edgy aspect to the witch. So in its shadow, it uses it for purposes that the witch doesn't want anyone to know about. Sort of the darker side of things, the things that you don't want to cop to, that you don't want anybody to know. Now, witches are brilliant secret keepers, but that doesn't necessarily put something 
in the shadow. What would be in the shadow is you're trying to control or manipulate someone according to your own magical process. By the way, not all witches work spells and magic, by the way. Some of them are just natural healers, right? There's all sorts of archetypes within the witch themselves. I actually have a video series up on uh, Vimeo uh, called The Witch Archetype, where we start going through those. Um, but I think we get we we're, we are looking at the wiki the the wiki witch oh is that a website no wiki the wiki Wikipedia's <laughs> if you're not following Pluto living you're missing out that dog is hysterical uh, but then of course what is the light attribute of the witch the light attribute of the witch is here to serve to me which has always been a job title right you're here here to serve it's sort of like the shaman of the tribe that you never really had a community of witches as much as you had. Uh, uh, a tribe of pagans, perhaps, and one witch. And nowadays it feels like there's one witch per family or community that we serve in that way, sort of like the shaman or the medicine person, or the one who, who keeps track of the tribal wisdom. Like, those mushrooms are okay to eat, those mushrooms are deadly, and if you're going to eat those mushrooms, take 48 hours off because your pupils are going to have to reset themselves if you perhaps know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Not since the 80s for me. So uh, we have our happy couple here. Now I have to say there's something very storybooky here about a knight and a witch. Let's see how this unfolds. If you're not sure exactly who you are, because by the way, you do not have to be a literal <laughs> cauldron stern broom flying spell casting witch to have the witch archetype. But are you that sort of solitary, near shamanic. I'm careful with the word shamanic because there's cultural misappropriation or appropriation going on there that I don't like. Um, is is there a piece of that that wise being in you? And remember, the word witch is gender neutral. Mm, I taught this stuff for decades. So if you're still a little iffy about what, I mean, I know I'm, I don't have the knight archetype. I don't have a stitch of that thing in me. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get five cards from the Daughters of the Moon. Uh, tarot, fire, earth, air, water, spirit, to clarify her, because I'm going to say her because it's the divine feminine, and uh, we're going to use five cards from the mythic tarot to clarify the witch, him, right? So even though we're not talking bodily gender, just to keep it straight in my head, I'm going to say her and him. You got it? Let's do it. this. Nice deep breath. As I call upon and ask my dear goddesses, the divine feminines, the half of the universal energy, please. Top five cards, elements spread for this knight, divine feminine knight archetype in this Piscean collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, romantic, sexual, satisfying soulmate contract for April, May 2020. Please, my goddesses, element of fire, what does she want? Element of earth, what does she have? Element of air, what does she think? Element of water, what does she feel? Element of spirit, what is the voice or the point of view of her soul in this soulmate contract? Thank you for April, May 2020. Maiden, mother, crone. Let's have a look. Element of fire, what does she want? What she wants is the Capricorn card. Now, that could be saying, of course, that this witch archetype divine masculine is a Capricorn, sun, moon, rising, whoever, whatever. But more likely, it's something more boundaried, something more long-term, something more stable, and something that's perhaps a little slow and steady wins the race. Like, let's get to know each other. Let's not move in on the second date. Let's take this slow and steady. Uh, Capricorn ruled by the planet Saturn has a ring around it, right? That's usually what it's known for. So that thing of boundaries, that we're very, very clear about who we are. What's mine and what's yours? What are my responsibilities? What are your responsibilities? I know for myself, the next romantic relationship I get into in any way, shape, or form, it's going to be really clear. Look, here's a main boundary. Don't fucking lie to me. Just be honest with me. I'm not made of spun glass. I'm a witch. I can handle this, right? The other one is, is I'm responsible for my own emotions and my own happiness. I'm never going to say you made me feel. I'm going to say, well, when you did that, I kind of felt... Right, it's the psychological language that I prefer because it just avoids a lot of blame back and forth. So there's an example of my boundaries. 
just two of a lot more. I am a Virgo, <laughs> the only sign that crosses its legs. Uh, so, you know, it wants something there that's a bit long-term, and certainly uh, Capricorns are known for more long-term in that way. Let's keep going. What does uh, she have? Now, it's interesting. She's got Earth in her an Earth card in her fire position. What's in her Earth position is another Earth card. The Eight of pentacles, the learner. So she's learning, she's growing. Again, perhaps slow and steady wins the race, but she's learning. Now, there's no guarantee that this is the Pisces, right? Whoever's watching this, cross-watcher or otherwise, either one of these can be Pisces, so that she perhaps has matured to a place of saying, I know I don't know everything, but I'm willing to learn. Let me learn. Let me see my relationships as a means through which I learn. Uh, not just how to love myself, but how to be loving, how to be mature, how to take the wisdom perhaps I've already garnered, and keep in mind this is a knight archetype, learning how to be more loyal in a romantic, chivalric, and honorable way. Or maybe has already attained that uh, and is now wanting to really put that into practice in a relationship, particularly you know, it's easier with family in some ways uh, like that because a knight is a member of a tribe that goes out and quests and, and does things for the king and queen. Uh, but in a romantic sexual context, with that romantic delusion, it can be really, really hard. So remember, this is a happy, healthy, <laughs> wealthy, wise uh, contract we're looking at here for these soulmates. So let's keep going. What does she think? Well, she's got the Aquarian card. Now already we've got two court cards here that says to me that this person probably has learned a lot from other relationships, probably twin flames, uh, probably from other lovers, other dating experiences, whatever, but what's on um, her mind is definitely about seeing a larger picture. Aquarius, 11th house, is fixed air, right? It's egalitarianism, which is interesting because Ixchel, the eagle woman, is riding an eagle. It's humanitarian and seeing things fixed air from the stratosphere, that sort of seeing the whole planet together, perhaps pulling back, seeing her relationship patterns uh, throughout time and making some correlations, connecting some dots there. And that would make sense with the learner here, right? Really sort of evaluating, putting together how much have I learned? How much of this am I ready to put into form? Now, if they have already met, maybe they've danced together, and because now what's happening on the planet, I have been avoiding it for community guideline reasons on YouTube, and I'm totally in support of those guidelines. Uh, also, it'll get me demonetized if I do it, so a little both. I am from New York. Uh, so, you know, that 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 thing of they just can't be together right now. Maybe they are in separate relationships. Maybe one's single, one's not. So just kind of feeling that out here on her mind, she's sort of like taking it all in. But from a knight's perspective, really questioning their own loyalty. Are they staying in a relationship that is toxic out of loyalty or do they have a loyalty to their own path and their own truth? Which I think a lot of people are facing in this current global situation if they are sequestering within their own domain with somebody toxic. Learn choices. <laughs> okay, what's going on in the emotional field? The element of water. Burnout. Now, there are two meanings to this card, and it both can be true for any one person. Could be either or as well. One is, of course, overcommitment, right? When we, when, we, um, <laughs> when we give out more than we take in, we burn out. And the eight of flames, that can be a fast burnout. But this is also the burnout of passion, right? That, that consuming fire, like a forest fire. Now, nothing... One of the things that really upsets me is the idea of a forest fire, let alone an actual, like, watching one. That rips me apart. I'm pretty sure I was a dryad in another life, in another dimension. A tree spirit. Um, I love the trees. They're my thing. As a Virgo. But what I'm getting here is it, it, this might really be like, you know, I'm just burned out where I am right now, and I just don't have the emotion to give anymore. And that would make sense that we're all a little, a little emotionally overwrought. We're, I'm talking Pisces here. If this is the Pisces, they're probably burned out. They're probably a little arid, which is a lovely word for dry, right? Emotionally dry and just like, I can't do this anymore might be spending more time in their head with that Aquarian card and really just saying, can I just have something 
that's more stable, where it's not always me doing all of the giving and all of the understanding, like a knight would, right? That loyalty, that honor, but where is their loyalty and honor to themselves? And can they be with somebody who is a mutual partner, not someone, oh, thank you, that they have to keep rescuing? They might want somebody that they don't have to rescue over and over and over again. Spirit. <laughs> the position of spirit. What's the voice of the soul? The voice of the soul is courage, my dear. It's the strength card, right? That the soul is saying, you have the strength to do this. Hang in there. Endure. Have the grace of fortitude to know that what you are feeling, this too shall pass. That uh, your sexual desires, if they have not been fulfilled, they are just as important to your loyalty structure for yourself. That if this relationship that they are in is indeed over, um, if they are in a relationship, again, this could just be personal burnout. This could be a great sense of emotional passion and wanting this so much, uh, like a quest, like being called, like the hero's journey, the hero hears the call. <laughs> And I won't feel bad at all when the hero takes the fall. <laughs> the Bangles, 1986, flashback. Um, yeah, so so that thing of courage, uh, courage, the word courage comes from the French word of the heart, the cur, right? So uh, to, to follow his heart, the, the, the soul is saying, do not give up, honey. Your heart's desire, this quest for your happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, romantic, sexual soulmate contract is, you're worthy of it. And it's written, hang in there. But every step along the way, it, yeah, it might be hard where you are right now. You might uh, really be learning some hard lessons here, but hang in there. Worth it. You're going to need it. It's necessary is what I'm feeling. Uh, let's look at the Divine Masculine here. This is Divine Masculine, which, like I said, it's just funny that I said... You know, I could be the Divine Masculine, and now here is the Witch, but we'll see in these next five if I have anything to do with this, shall we? Because <laughs> I don't like it when I pop up in readings, but I'm also going to deny, not deny it when I, when I see it for what it is. Honesty is a big thing for me, so nice deep breath. <sighs> My gods, please, the collective divine masculine energy of the universe the divine yang please top five hey, top five cards element spread in this pisces collective sun moon rising venus sign happy healthy wealthy wise intimate romantic sexual soulmate contract What's going on with this divine masculine witch archetype? Keeping in mind, does not have to identify as a witch, uh, but witch archetype for April, May 2020. Please, my God. Top five cards. Oh, thank you. Elements spread. April, May 2020. Sun, Father, Sage. Me. Go. Let's see. What's going on with him? What's he want? The Hanged Man. He kind of just wants to sit back and let this come to him, is kind of what this is, and I can relate to that, right? The Hanged Man is a card of surrender and often sacrifice. Now, sacrifice is a weird word because we often think of things getting their throats slit. But sacrifice, if you look at the root of the word, I was raised by a teacher and a lawyer, so I've looked up the meanings of words, particularly the original meanings of words. To sacrifice means to make sacred. Right, so perhaps there is, has been a real letting go, particularly of a point of view, a letting go of people, of places, of past lovers, of patterns, a real surrender saying, all right, fine. And this I can relate to, I said, fine. You want me to be with somebody else, fine. You want me to be single the rest of my life, just me and my cats and my career and my family, blessed be, because I know my faith, my trust is there that I will be happy no matter what happens, because happiness is an inside job, it's Pisces moon, I get that. Um, but if this is what he wants, it really is that element of fire of saying, okay, show me, I let go. Not so much passive, that's the, the sacrifice part of it. It's like, take from me whatever you need to take from me. Let there be loss, so that makes room for the gain of something healthy in my life. Uh, this is Prometheus bound, stole fire from the gods and paid the price for it. Uh, a vulture pecking out his liver every day and it would grow back. <clears throat> just for fire, really. Just so that we could have Bic lighters. <laughs> it's a great myth. 
Gods are so understanding back then. They're much more understanding now. Hard to light candles without fire, right? Uh, what's the element of Earth here that will help him get that? The Knight of Cups. The sign of Pisces. Oh my goodness gracious. So chances are these two already know each other, or... Well, but it is, it's element of Earth. This is saying that there's already a Piscean element, or this could be the Pisces, but that it is the night, come on, come on. What are the chances that what he has to help him kind of let go is to understand his own intuitive process, to understand the mutability of water, that he's gonna go through his emotional depth in this as well as his emotional shallowness of it to feel his way through. Now, the Piscean, again, me being a Pisces moon, I've studied a lot about Pisces. I am an empath. That's how I'm able to do these readings and tune in vibrationally to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people in zodiacal collectives, right? But at the same time, I've really learned that a lot of what I'm feeling isn't all me as an empath. So uh, to kind of have that strength, this is the position of Earth, that there is an emotional strength here with this witch that really trusts their gut and that from, and I'll say this for myself, if I really feel like somebody's lying to me or deceiving me or worse, sin of omission, just omitting the truth, something's off here. I will never again will I doubt that, right? So there's an emotional strength here, an intuitive emotional strength that has perhaps he's able, she, yeah, this divine masculine, he's able to feel both the heights of joy, bliss, and ecstasy, as well as powerlessness, uh, despair, and depression, and somehow manage to keep it all together. I just find that interesting that we've got the knight and the knight, one representing the divine feminine, one the earth position of the divine masculine. I find that very interesting, although I'm sure that was bound to pop up kinda, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> What's he thinking? What's his element of air? Okay, so what he's thinking about really is that ten of flames, thinking about the, what it is that he really wants that would make this feel complete. At least a ten that would then reboot at the one. The ten of flames is about the completion of desire. Here we see the completion of the quest of the golden fleece. And doesn't that kind of quest, right, the, the Jason and the Argonauts and the golden fleece and all of that, sometimes soulmate contracts can feel that way, what we go through just to meet the person, but then once you meet them, that's not the end of the quest, that's end of a chapter, and it is the beginning of the next, perhaps getting to know each other, that integration, that dating process, right? Now keep in mind, she wants to slow and steady wins the race, but he's sort of has in his mind a rather complete picture of what he wants, and maybe that's part of what he's having to uh, surrender, right? Let me let go of this idea of what it is, this complete perfect picture, uh, so that I can be open to whatever the gods send me, even if that is me being single for the rest of my life. And I've said this to my gods, look, you want me to be an integral slut for the rest of my life? It's a really good book called me the the integral slut, right? A slut with integrity. It's like, all right, I'm I'm. It's my sexuality is my own. Romantic, my romantic life is my own. I may date hundreds of more people in this life, but each one will be honorable, ha happy, healthy, wealthy, wise. Which is still could be what this is, by the way. No one says that soulmates are forever and ever and ever, as if you need anything after forever. Everything after that is redundant. Um, but but definitely has an idea in mind of what it is that he truly desires. And there's nothing wrong with that, but um, to be too uh, static on it, because <laughs> what actually shows up is better for us than anything we can even imagine, but usually for the benefit of the soul, not necessarily for the comfort of the ego. In fact, rarely for the comfort of the ego. But it's nice when it does happen both ways. What's going on in his element of water here? Remember, it's a water sign reading here. <laughs> is feeling empowered, the card of Zeus, the emperor. Now I have to say, of all the cards in the Major Arcana, this card has showed up, I think, more in this series of readings than any other Major Arcana, except maybe the card of the sun, which is Apollo, uh, in this particular deck for the Divine Masculine. So there is something here about being in emotional control, and I, I, I will say that's particularly true here with this Knight of Cups, again, representing the sign of Pisces. See, in these two decks, why I love them so much is 
in the Daughters of the Moon literally writes the name of the card on the deck. This one says Capricorn. This one says Aquarius, right? Here, oh, what wrong one? Here we've got the little fish jumping out of the pond. So Julia Charmin Burke is uh, the the tarot that I learned court cards as the the signs of the zodiac, not including the pages, mind you. But uh, the knights are mutable, the queens are fixed, the kings are cardinal. You apply that to the four elements: air, fire, water, earth. It gives you the twelve signs, right? Three states, four elements, twelve signs of the zodiac. Here is the emperor, the emperor Zeus, which is the culmination or the amalgamation of all the kings, all the cardinal signs. So the ultimate creator. The ultimate layer, laying down of boundaries, the rulership. So particularly in terms of the emotional empire here, this could very easily be the Pisces. It could be either one of them, particularly with those romantic delusions and that love of honor and, and romance. Could be either uh, of them. They could both have placements, mind you. That's always a case uh, in Pisces. In any reading, uh, they can share uh, signs that way. But I'm really getting the feeling here that there is some emotional stability here. Not only knows what he wants, but but has the power to delegate, has the power to rule uh, his own emotions that way. Not to be over-controlling necessarily, but to know that emotions can change in a lightning bolt, right? Like a flash of lightning, but be able to stay grounded and centered and see things from a more um, healthier perspective. What's the card of spirit for him? What is the point of view, the voice of the soul? Well, he's got three major arcana cards. Uh, she's got one. He's got the card of the devil here. So to, to keep in mind, what is the shadow stuff going on here? What is the stuff uh, in, in the soul that is yet to be processed? Because it's one thing to want a relationship. It's another to be in one. So it's almost... Well, and yes, and I'm getting two meanings for this as well. Um, there's so many different interpretations to any one card, but the card of the devil is usually about fear, about attachments, about addictions, to, to keep an eye on that, those dependencies that may show up within the self or within the other. But I'm also getting kind of loud and clear here that this is, because it is the god Pan, see, pagans don't have a satanic figure in any of our pantheons. All of our gods are a balance of light and shadow. Uh, this is certainly about the animal nature of it, too. And the thing about being a witch, and one of the people say, why why witchcraft? Because it's true. I'll speak for myself for a moment. Um, I would have been good in any religion. I would have been good on any spiritual path. I chose witchcraft because it was one of the very, very few available to me growing up that wasn't sending me to hell because I'm gay. Right? So my sexuality is a big part of my spirituality because sexual energy and spiritual energy are all the same thing. <laughs> As is creative energy, I studied Tantra. I had to go to the East to find that before I discovered um, esoteric uh, sex magic, <laughs> Western sex magic, which is more than just doing it for a new car. <laughs> I've never slept with anybody to get a new car, by the way. That's not what I meant, anyway. So, a very, very interesting um, uh, divine major arcana schemata here for him. No question, the hangman, the emperor, and the card of the devil. Uh, Prometheus, Zeus, and Pan. But you got to get that Pan is very, very playful, too. And uh, very, very sexual. And very, very seductive, but very earth-oriented. He is an earth god and son of Hermes. We've got five more cards down. Uh, two from the Healing with the Angels Oracle by Doreen Virtue. We'll get one for her, one for him. And this will represent the angels that walk with them, helping them heal individually. But as they heal, they will be helping each other heal, whether they know each other or not. Or maybe they do know each other, but they can't be together. Or maybe they are physically together in the same space. Let's have a look. Nice deep breath. Oh, my angels, thank you. Hi, please. Uh, two cards, one for the Divine Feminine Knight and one for the Divine Masculine Witch in this Piscean Collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, romantic, soulmate contract for April, May 2021 for her, please. And one for him. Relatively easy. What's the angel walking with her? Trust. 
Who do you trust? What do you trust? Can this knight archetype trust himself? Is he trustworthy? Uh, and is he willing to trust others? Is he willing to trust the path? Is he willing to trust enough to open his heart? That's the healing thing going on for her. I know I keep saying him because it's a knight. That's my error for sure. This is a divine feminine. Can be her, him. You know, whatever. <laughs> Big whatever. Uh, <laughs> but for the Divine Masculine Witch got the Soulmate card. So the Angel of Soulmate really saying that this is a Soulmate contract, no matter how it goes, no matter when it comes, no matter what goes down, you gotta get, if you are the Divine Masculine Witch here, that this is something that was preordained, written into the script, uh, and something that he's gotta surrender to and play it out. Now, really, it's one of those things. It's like the appointment in Samara, if you're not familiar. This guy's a, it's a, it's a guy's in Egypt, and he runs across death, right? And he sees death, and he's like, oh my god, it's death. Jumps on his horse and just beats it out of town, goes to the town of Samara, where death is waiting for him. And he said, why can't I get away from you? I, 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 I avoided you. He goes, well, that wasn't our appointment there. We had an appointment in Samara. So it's just one of those things. Cannot be avoided here in any way, shape, or form. This is eventual. Uh, and, and this really is perhaps the fulfillment of both of their heart's desires, both of their dreams, so to speak. And really, uh, because we're dealing with the Pisces here, this is something that might have been pushed down to the bottom of the ocean uh, for this divine masculine witch here who's really trying to control his emotions as Zeus and is willing to sacrifice, but yet that call of the devil card, the call of that animalistic nature, because it is a happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, romantic uh, soulmate contract. Let's keep going. Two more cards. Uh, we've got three in total, but two more cards uh, from the Whispers of Love Oracle, the voices of the higher selves of all involved, yes, my own included. Let's have a look. Nice deep breath. The higher selves of all involved, please. Two cards, one for the Divine Feminine Knight archetype and one for the Divine Masculine Witch archetype. In this Piscean Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, romantic, sexual soulmate contract for April, May 2020. Please, my beloved higher selves, the collective, my own as well. Okay, one for the Divine Feminine Knight, one for the Divine Masculine Witch. I like these cards. Sometimes they just spit it right out. What she got? What's the whisper of love? Back to what you love. Your current situation is giving you an opportunity to reevaluate what you want. I get the feeling this Divine Masculine Knight archetype is in a place they don't want to be anymore, right? Well, I mean, who wants to be put on hold in life in general. Watch me dance around the subject, right? Getting back to what you love. This might very well be a situation that he find, that she finds herself in, Divine Feminine. Again, could be a male. Um, about trusting that where they are, though it may be slow and steady, wins the race to get what they want, really has the opportunity to evaluate what uh, they want so they can get back uh, to what they love. What does the Divine Masculine Witch here have? The union of hearts. There is a connection of love that defies explanation. I have a feeling in a huge chunk of the collective that I'm reading for here, these two know each other. And they tried to make a go of it before, but it didn't go well. And I could see this Divine Masculine Witch go, I don't understand. Why do I even want to be with this person anymore? Why do I still think about this person? And I can relate to that. I think all of us can relate to that to some extent uh, if you've been walking the path for a while. And maybe that's why he's like, give it up. Take it away. I want to let it go. I want to let it go. I want to let it go. I want to see things differently. Let me move on to someone else, someone healthier for me. But it feels like these two uh, really do have a contract here. Now, I will just say from a perhaps a fairy tale point of view, knights and witches don't get along well. It's usually the knights that are sent to capture the witch to be brought back for torture and um, execution. Uh, not to mention a witch, plenty of witches have um, 
cast spells upon knights to do them things to make them do things they wouldn't have done otherwise. Just saying from a storybook point of view, because archetypes really do make up uh, not just the stories of our lives, but our fairy tales, our myths, our legends as well. So there's something a little legendary here, or legendary here. So since this is about helping each other heal, man, this has probably got past life stuff written all over it. Let's get you a healing mantra card from the Healing Mantra deck by Matt Kahn. Just one. So it doesn't matter who you are in uh, this soulmate contract. If you work this mantra, it will help heal you individually. But because of the quantum entanglement of a soulmate contract, you will help each other heal. You will help the other heal, whether you know them or not, whether you've been together or not, doesn't matter. So let's ask the Ascended Masters of soulmate contracts. Yeah, they specialize. Who knew? I didn't until I met them. Breathe. My Ascended Masters of Soulmate Contracts, please. One card in clarity, the perfect healing mantra for this Piscean Collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, romantic, sexual, satisfying soulmate contract involving this knight and this witch for April, May 2020. What is the perfect healing mantra for them? My Masters. Acknowledging apprehension when it's a yes, nothing can stop me. When I'm unsure, it's always a no. Really, really good guidance. There we go. When it's a yes, nothing can stop me. When I'm unsure, it's always a no. Even if that is in process, I have learned. Now, since all that's written on there, I'm going to read you from the little bookie book here because I find it to be very, very helpful. Uh, acknowledging apprehension when it's a yes, nothing can stop me when I'm unsure it is always a no. When apprehension is acknowledged, you become aware of a constant back and forth between polarities. As this back and forth movement occurs, it can feel nearly impossible to make decisive, empowering choices. As you acknowledge any apprehension, recognize that it's either your heart trying to warn you of an old choice or pattern you're about to repeat, or it is a sense of unworthiness that makes you unsure about how to step onto the biggest stage you dream of commanding. Which is very much about a soulmate contract, just falling in love in general. Uh, the power of discernment bubbles closer to the surface the more often your apprehensions are acknowledged, and it is needed to determine which of these two actions to take. So in other words, it's acknowledged when you're feeling apprehensive. And I can kind of sense that on both of their parts here, which really says uh, two things. One, they've both been burnt and hurt before, and who the hell hasn't? That's why they're called twin flame contracts, the ones that prepare us to become first the mates of our own soul, learning how to love yourself, respect yourself, all of that, and then, of course, being in a soulmate contract. The other is, is these two know each other. And, and it's like, I don't know that I want to do that. And from where they are right now, since they probably can't be together for global reasons, let's say, uh, that would make sense. Uh, this mantra is ideal for resolving indecisiveness, balancing impulsive behaviors, and trusting your instincts. So it feels like they are not supposed to be together right now, and I have to say that is a trend I've seen in pretty much every soulmate read I have done this time around. But let's pop up the picture and see what else jumps out, shall we? Magic clap. We start with the Divine Feminine Knight Archetype in the Shadow. Allegiance to a destructive ruler or principle. Romantic delusion. So it might very well be that this uh, Divine Feminine Knight is in a relationship and has to be uh, loyal and an allegiance to someone who's sort of ruling the relationship. It's probably in a codependent, abusive, neglective thing. One of those three, all of those three. Uh, but with the light attribute, definitely has loyalty, romance, and chivalry with a love of honor. Even if they're not experiencing it right now, it is in the recipe somewhere. And I would get 
that what uh, this what she wants here is this Capricorn slow and steady wins the race. Let me climb the mountain. Let me climb my way out of this. Uh, particularly with that back to what you love card, there really sort of contemplating this and how to take the physical action to evolve and move on. What she's got in that position of Earth there is also an Earth card, the eighth. Sorry, the eight of pentacles, the learner. So is really gathering and garnering wisdom uh, thread by thread as what's in the card there is a crone teaching a maiden how to make blankets, which is, you know, a long process to learn how to do. And even once you learn how to do it, it takes time. So probably applying everything that she has learned. What's on her mind? Ixchel, the eagle woman, the Aquarian card, really trying to see things from the highest point of view to see the larger patterns going on in her life and in her relationships, perhaps even to strategize here because emotionally she's either completely burned out where she is right now, which is a strong possibility, uh, and along with that, even the possibility that has a great passion and a deep love to be in love, to be in something better, to be in something happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, and romantic, and the point of view of the soul is interesting, is talking about the courage there, the card of the heart, the card of strength, to hang in there, this is worth doing. Uh, and with that angel card there of trust, to trust your heart, to trust the process, to trust that everything is set up for you to heal, to learn, to grow, to be the mate of your own soul so that you can mate with your soulmate. And what is the voice of the higher self there? Back to what you love. Your current situation is giving you an opportunity to reevaluate what it is that you want, probably because you're in a situation where it's not what you want. Jumping over here to the Divine Masculine Witch archetype, the shadow attribute using wisdom and power in a way that is toxic, uh, to control, to manipulate, uh, to pull strings in a way that is not healthy for anyone, the witch himself involved. Uh, the light attribute, really willing to serve, really willing to heal, really willing to help, to apply wisdom, love, and power in a relationship in general, if not throughout his entire life. What is it that he wants? The hanged man, just to let go and let God, let go and let God. It's like, whatever, whatever, it's going to happen. If it's not, it's not. Let me just chill out here, hanging upside down on this rock. Go ahead, peck my liver out. If that's the price that has to be paid for me to get to where I'm supposed to go, then that's fine. But it might even be um, the letting go of whatever that looks like because of what's going on in that mental position of the Ten of Wands. But before we get there, we have the Knight of Cups in the position of uh, Earth here, that Piscean card that really... He probably has feelings for this Divine Feminine Knight because it is the Knight of Cups, or at least has that mutable water, is able to feel different ways about this, Is has a bit of emotional stability, and is willing to allow both fish to be heard, as it were, if this is the Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus sign. But yes, in uh, his mind, the Ten of Wands, really does have a, an image uh, of what he wants, the fulfillment of his desire, at least in terms of what he wants, maybe not how it will play out physically, but has a good idea of that, and maybe that's part of what he wants to surrender in that hanged man. Well, he might have this uh, knight archetype under his skin in one way or another, and saying, well, it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be her, doesn't have to be that knight archetype, it could be somebody else wanting so much to give that up, but with that card of Zeus, the emperor, in the emotional field, it does feel like that there is a strong, dominant thing there, that a real wanting uh, what he wants and having the emotional stability there and is willing to do what is ever necessary to control oneself, to deal with one emotions and getting ready to throw that lightning when that is necessary. And the point of view of the, the soul here with that card of the devil to me isn't all that terribly different. Uh, from what the Divine Feminine has in her spirit position, uh, the point of view of the soul, with the card of strength. Here, though, it's saying about the physicality of it, right? The carnal nature of it. Sure, are there shadows to be dealt with in any situation, in every situation? Absolutely. But the card of the devil here, particularly because it's depicted as Pan, might very well be 
about pay attention to your desires, pay attention to the, your lusts, your hungers, that they are necessary for the path and the healing too, particularly in a sexual soulmate contract. Um, and with that card of soulmate, that that's got to be part of it. It just has to be that this, that there is a very sexual connection here between the two. And perhaps this divine masculine witch archetype might be avoiding sexual relationships right now, not to mention relationships in the physical time and space together because of where we are on planet Earth. But <laughs> here's the one that really kind of tops it off. The union of hearts, right? There is a connection of love that defies explanation here. That, you know, things that defy explanation don't really thrill witches. We tend to kind of want to know, what's the tea? What's going on? I need an explanation for this. And oh, your soulmates might not exactly cut it, and hence that feeling of apprehension, perhaps on both sides here, with acknowledging apprehension, uh, the point of view of uh, the, the healing mantra from the Ascended Masters, when it's a yes, nothing can stop me, when I'm, I'm unsure, it's always a no. And that might be some of the stop and go of what's gone on in this relationship, if they know each other and have danced together before, or perhaps they have both been through this, and they're really not ready to come together just yet, at least not for April, May 2020. And you know what? Soulmate contracts are worth waiting for, but it's not like you sit there idly. I mean, as much as he may want to just hang out on the couch here, right? That's not usually how it goes. It's you have to keep doing your work. The more you heal, the more you help the other heal, regardless of whether you're in the same room or miles away from each other. It doesn't matter. So, uh, may the Piscean Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs be blessed with all that they need in their soulmate contracts, their happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, romantic, sexual soulmate contracts for April, May 2020, that they may help each other heal, grow, learn, and become the best that they can be individually as well as uh, collectively for their well-being and for the well-being of all. So mo to be. And so it is. Thank you for watching. Again, please do like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and feel free to comment in the comment section below. Um, I do read them all. I don't always comment on all of them, but if you get a heart and a thumbs up at the same time, that's me. Cool, cool. Wishing you the very best and the very blessed for April, May, my Pisceans. My Mer family. Kale, farewell, and blessed, blessed be.